Hi, this is Pat Love. Listen, I want you to hear this scripture, followed by Pat's two cents. This is Ezekiel chapter 37, starting at the beginning, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and sat me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and, lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Mm. I'm going to stop there for a minute. There's a script, there's a word in the Bible called Selah, S-E-L-A-H. It means pause and think about that one. Can you picture that? You're in the middle, in the, this Pat's two cents. You're in the middle of this, this big valley of nothingness and it's full of dead, dry bones. And they're all fragmented. They're not skeletons. No, these are almost like the skeletons have been pulled apart, bone by bone. So there's just a mound, a pile of bones everywhere. And if you don't know anything about anatomy like most of us don't, you wouldn't know what goes to what. It would be like an, a, a, a puzzle that no one could have solved. But all God did was speak the word through a prophet. And the biggest question was, can these bones live? Now, how can anybody get life out of death? It's impossible. It's, it's not doable. Science hasn't figured it out, but God knows, and God can. He's the only one who can. So when you are in a situation, think about this now. When you're in a situation where God seems like you don't know where he is at this moment, you're in a quandary, and you've got a whole lot more questions than you do answers. And it almost seems to you like a lost cause. And you're not sure if there's any life left in the situation. If there's anything worth salvaging. If there's anything worth uh, investing your time and energy in. If there's anything worth praying for. You know... We wonder, you know, we look at situations, we look at people, we look at places, we look at what's happening, current events. We have no idea what to make of it. Sometimes it looks so chaotic and so crazy that it's mind boggling, isn't it? Sometimes it can really get you down. We wonder, well, what just happened? I don't get this. And I understand because, you know, when you look at the elections, you look at the condition of the country, that, I mean, the condition, the, this thing started deteriorating decades ago, baby. Not just a few years ago. This thing has been deteriorating. Decisions, legal decisions had been made all kind of schemes, plans, money-making ideas, all kind of ventures that were not there for the people, but for the powers that be, that hold the, the money strings, the purse strings of the world. And you and I and some of our friends, relatives and neighbors, we're looking at the whole picture saying, what? 
what is this? What is going on? What's going to become of me? What's going to become of my kids? What's going to become of my family? What's going to become of us? What is going to happen to America? We, you know, we can't fathom this. And sometimes God poses a question. What do you think good can happen out of this? Can you see it? Can you picture it? Can you believe for it and pray for it? You know, in this country, in what's going on in these last days, we not only have to pray, we have to speak. No weapon formed against us will prosper. We have to quote God's word. We have to speak things into the atmosphere. We have to take authority, pulling down strongholds and every imagination that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God or Christ. Or I, I, I am, I'm not reading, so that's why I said, or oh, Christ. So sometimes in my mind, I'm like, okay, which one was it? You know how it is when you memorize something. But I just say that we have to be careful not to allow ourselves to lose hope. Don't lose hope. There's a song a guy used to sing years ago. I'm not doing a solo. I just want you to hear the words. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? The Bible asks, is there anything too hard for the Lord? There is nothing impossible for God. Nothing and while chaos and all hell is breaking loose all around you, you and yours can be sitting up having a little spot of tea in total peace, totally safe, because he's set his angels round about you to keep you in all your ways. Now I'm talking from Psalms 91. And Psalms 91 says, Though a thousand shall fall and ten thousand at your right hand, it shall not come nigh thee. It won't touch you. It won't even blow any stink on you. You see what I mean? God knows how to take care of what belongs to him. He knows how to look after us. And I just ask you to really be encouraged. Because as hopeless as it is, when you're in Christ Jesus, when he is your Lord and your Savior, you have an upper hand, and God knows how to keep you safe. Do you hear what I'm saying? He knows how to take care of who belongs to him. So don't get caught up in the weather predictions. Don't get caught up in the news. Yeah, you need to know what's going on so you know accurately how to pray. But don't let it get you down. Because we have a God. And he is very much alive. You hear me? He is not dead. He is risen. Amen? And he will also raise us up with 